So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for how to use a Nelco sewing machine. They don't make these for personal use anymore, so um, there's been a little bit of interest in how to use one of these older machines. So um, hopefully this helps. So this is the Nelco sewing machine. And the basics of pretty much any sewing machine are that the balance wheel turns and the needle sews. Of course, nobody wants to sit here and do this with their hand all day, so we have the foot pedal. Which, of course, the foot pedal actually goes on the ground and you press it with your foot, hence the name. But I've got it up here just for demonstration. And so when you push the foot pedal, the needle goes up and down. And of course, the harder you push it, the faster the needle goes. So that's the basic purpose of a sewing machine. Now, to actually operate the machine, you have to start by threading it. So to thread the machine, you want to turn the wheel so that your needle is at its highest point. So there's two thread holders on the back side here. So take your spool of thread and the hole in the thread. You just want to slide that onto one of the thread holders on the back side of the machine. And then you want to run the end of the thread through the first thread guard on the top, and then through the second on the top. And then you'll wind it around the tension dial. There's a little groove there, so you wind it right around that. And then you'll bring it behind the next thread guard. And then you want to run it through the hole at the top of the needle. And then you'll bring it down and swirl it around the next guide. And then you'll swirl it around the lower guide. And then my sewing machine has an extra swirl on it um, that the repair shop put on there, so yours might not have it. Uh, but I swirl it around that one as well. And then of course you just slide it through the hole and the needle in the bottom. So this is your bobbin case. This is what the thread goes in. Um, this little screw here is so you can tighten it if you need to. Um, it's not that often that you need to tighten it. Usually you have to tighten the thread on the machine itself. But um, if you do need to tighten it, you just take a small screwdriver and either tighten or loosen that little screw. So to thread the bobbin, you just put the bobbin, slip that right on there. So there's that little hole, you just slip the bobbin right on there. And then this little piece of thread that's hanging out, there's a little crack right there. You just want to pull it up through there until it gets in that little gap there. So it comes out there so that way when the thread pulls, the bobbin spins, which is what you want. So over on the front side here, we have this little lever. And if you hold that up, it stops the bobbin from moving so it doesn't fall out. So once you get the bobbin threaded, that will go under the sewing plate. There's a little prong sticking out there that the bobbin goes on. You can see better here, that little prong is what you'll stick the bobbin onto. So you want to hold onto the handle so the bobbin doesn't fall out of the case. You just slide that onto the prong. The hole in the bobbin, you'll slide that right onto the prong on the underside of the sewing machine. You want to hold onto the edge of the thread when you slide it in. And there's a little notch in the plastic around it. You want to make sure that the prong on the bobbin case sits right in that notch to hold it in place. So hold on to that little tail of thread, and then on the top side, hold down the thread coming out of the needle with your finger, and then you want to turn the balance wheel just once or twice until the needle goes down and up once. So let the needle go all the way down and come all the way up, and that will loop around that lower thread that's coming out of the bobbin, and it'll bring it up through the center hole. So just pull that through, and you got the two threads on the top side of the sewing machine. So then when you take the material that you're going to be sewing and lay it with the right sides together and then you want to take some sewing pins and you just want to pin the material together on the line that you're going to sew. Make sure you go through both pieces I'll just hold it in place. And I like to put my pins about two inches apart. Um, it seems to work the best for my machines. So that's the way I do it. And so then around on the back side of the sewing machine uh, there's the little dial that turns on the sewing light. Just by clicking it once, it turns it on and turns it off. If you need to change the bulb, the front of the sewing machine just opens up really easily. And then the lever on the back is what raises the presser foot up and down so you can sew. The material is just supposed to guide itself through, so if you realize it's not working, you can adjust the pressure by pushing this down a little bit. If you want pressure, you can push it down a little more, and it'll go all the way down. And then to just release it, there's this little gap on top, you just push that. and it pops right back up. So then you can 
adjust it again, however much you need. That's how you do your pressure. I usually sew it about halfway down for what I'm sewing. And so this is the thread tension dial. You'll either have to tighten or loosen it, uh, depending on what your stitches are doing. If you find that the bottom of the stitches are like a solid straight line, then you're probably too loose. And if your top stitches are a solid straight line, then you're probably too tight. So you have to play with it a little bit to find out exactly where you need to be um, for your stitches. So then here we have the stitch regulator dial, and this will do your, your stitch length. Uh, basically, the bigger the number, the bigger the stitch. It's about, about an eighth inch stitch. And the smaller, the bigger the number you go, the smaller the stitches get. And um, when you get to here, it's almost even not moving. But this is good for like, because it gets sagging and stuff. So I usually go, usually go about an eight for my standard sewing. So then on the sewing plate, there's different lines you can keep track of your seam allowance. And then there's a little ruler at the bottom so you can keep track of how straight your fabric is. So to actually start sewing, just slide your fabric under the presser foot. Use a lever to put the presser foot down. And then you want to hold on to the tails to start. Um, on my machine they get tangled up if I don't, so you always want to hold on to the tails and then use your other hand to turn the balance wheel a couple times and just get a couple stitches in. Um, you don't need a lot, just two or three, just enough to get the thread started. And then once you've got those two or three stitches, you can let go of the tail and use the foot pedal to sew. And when you're sewing, you just want to guide the material through. You don't want to push it, and you don't want to pull it off sideways either, because if you pull it or push it, then you're going to slam your needle into the sewing plate, and you're going to break the entire needle. Um, so just let kind of guide the material through, but don't force it. And when I get to a pin, I always pull the pins out. Otherwise, I end up with some needles like this. This is where the needle went down and hit it, and then totally bent it, and it's pretty much unusable at this point. And then also the sewing needle itself. I don't know if you can see that, but it's... It's now curved, so I can't use this because it hit the pin so hard it bent the needle. So I usually slip the pins out before I'm to them so that I don't end up with stuff like this. So when you get to the end of one side and you want to go around the corner, you lift up with the needle. And the needle's still down. It's still in there. So I just lifted the presser foot. And then you just spin the material around because the needle's still in there to hold it in place. And you just put the presser foot back down. And then just get the one out. Again, stopping before I get to the pin. And slicking the pin out. And so then when you get down to the end of your sewing, the last few stitches you'll just do by hand by turning the balance wheel. And then raise the needle. You want the needle up so it's at its highest point. And then raise the presser foot. And then just pull the material out. And the thread tails, just cut those off. And then just swing those around out of the way so we'll be ready for the next time you sew. So then I always do really easy knots. I just take one of them and pull it up through. So that I got the two threads on the same side. And then I just tie them into a regular little knot. And cut off the excess. And this will be on the inside so you don't have to worry about it showing. And so then when you turn it inside, right side out, you got this nice, lovely little stitch. And you can't see any of the stitches unless you really, really pull on it. And there they are. But that just like that. Now at some point you're going to want to replace your needle either because you're changing fabrics or if you've bent it or it's broken, needles will eventually break. Um, and so you'll want to change that. So the needles come in little packages like this. Uh, generally the darker the color, the thicker the needles are. I sew a lot of denim, so I go through the, the thickest ones first. Okay, so this is the thumb screw that holds the needle on. So hold the needle in your hand, and then you just turn that towards you a couple times, and the needle slides right out. So you just take out that needle. And then to put in the next one, the needles have a flat edge. I don't know if you can see it real well in here, but the flat edge. There's a curved edge and a flat edge. The flat edge you want to face that way. So you want the flat edge right against the square. So the flat edge goes that way. So just slide it in between the presser foot. And there's a little gap right there. So the needle just slides up into that little gap. And it goes up until it hits that part there, that little, that little spot. And then you just turn the thumb screw the other side to tighten it. 
Okay, and so then from this angle, you just slide it up until it hits that little dot. And you just tighten the thumb screw in place. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that the needle is high as it can be. It makes it easier to replace. So now, sometimes you want to change the presser foot, whether you want to do like hemming or ruffling or whatever. There's a bunch of different presser feet that they make that you can put on the bottom for different things. And so to do that, just take your screwdriver, turn that until the presser foot falls off. You'll have to turn it so you can get it out far enough to pull off the one foot. And then you can just put on another one. So these little things, they go right around the screw. And then just kind of hook on there. And then you just tighten that back up until it's good and tight. And then you can do that. And I do have a whole tutorial on how to use the, uh, the hammer foot too. That should be popping up on your screen right now. Now eventually you will run out of thread on your bobbin and you'll have to refill the bobbin. So to do that, you just take an empty bobbin you stick it up on this little thing that's sticking up here. You just push it down onto that. And the problem is, when this turns, this does not. And the needle, the needle still goes too, which you don't want. So, you come around here, there's this metal knob. So you want to hold onto this and turn just the silver part towards you. What that'll do is it'll, so that when you turn the balance wheel, the needle won't move anymore. This. And click it back, so then when you turn the balance wheel, not only does the needle not move, but this spins around now. So when you step on the foot pedal, it'll spin a lot faster. So, take your thread, like usual, stick it on one of your... You want to bring it around through this one, and then through the next one, just like you would normally for sewing, but instead of going down, you're going to go right over to here. Stick it up through one of those little holes, because the bobbins all have those little holes in them, so stick it up one of those little holes. You just have to hold it, hold it with your finger for a few minutes and I like to just spin it with my hand for a minute to just drag it around just so it gets started. And so then once you step on the foot pedal it'll spin real fast and wind the thread around there. And that'll evenly wind itself up and down the bobbin so you get a nice evenly wound bobbin. You don't want to overwind the bobbin kind of let it go on its own. It's always a good idea to have quite a few of these filled before you start sewing so you don't have to worry about running out. And so then once it gets, you know, once it starts hitting there, you just pull this back over here and then over here and then just retighten that so that the needle will spin again. And this has stopped spinning because we pulled it over here. And so then, because we moved it back over here, just pick it up and cut off the excess thread. And then you've got your bobbin ready to go in, and this is already half thread, and you can just go down and thread the rest of the machine. Okay, so this is a very simple machine, but there's a few, you know, little things that it can do. So I'll show you what that is. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is backstitching, and I have always hated backstitching. And, you know, I mean, I usually, like, double sew everything. I was like, I want you to just backstitch it so much easier. Well, not for me, and I will show you why. Um, on this machine, to backstitch, you sew yourself a normal line of stitches. Okay. So then to backstitch, you have to hold, push in the stitch regulator dial, and hold that in the entire time so this thing can backstitch. It's kind of a pain in the neck because you're holding with one hand, so you end up with separating lines, and it's just, it's not very easy. So what I usually do is I'll just sew over it once, and then sew over it again. It's much easier for me, so. So the zigzag stitch is kind of a fun one. You know, you can go as far across and make big zigzags, or the lower you go, you make little zigzags. Um, I like making big zigzags, but you basically start it the same way, and you'll see that the needle moves. When you move this, the needle moves. So what I like to do is I like to start it straight so that it's where I need it to be. And I just do a couple of stitches, you know, like one. And then I move it over. And you also want to change the dial. Usually, you know, I like smaller, smaller zigzags. You can do bigger zigzags, but we'll just do a big zigzag for this. Um, and then you just kind of step on it. Zigzag its way through there. And then 
just pull it up and pull it out. The really nice thing about this is when you do the zigzag, it's stretchy. It's a very stretchy stitch. So if you want something to be stretchy, you can do the zigzag stitch. And that's that's for a big zigzag. Now a small zigzag, this material doesn't fray, but if you get material that frays, um, zigzag stitches are really good for going along the edge. You can do it like an overlock machine. And then for this, you want to sew pretty close to the edge for this. So I'm just going to do a couple stitches just to get it in there. And so then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put it on the big one. And this, I'm going to move this down to about 15. And that way I'll be able to go right over the edge. So going back to over here, I'm just going to step on it. Just go. Moves it kind of slowly through there. As you can see, it does a really nice zigzag stitch along the edge there. You can make your stitches even smaller with the dial if you want to. Um, but it takes longer, obviously. But this will this will keep your edges from fraying if you have material that frays. So then this thing is kind of cool because this will it'll give you extra stitches. It makes a nice strong thing. I do it when I'm sewing like hemp shopping bags and stuff. So if you do this, it gives you three stitches in one with a nice extra amount of stitch. Kind of like a back stitch, I guess. And it will also work with the zigzag. If you do it with the zigzag, you'll get triple stitches with that too. I'll show you that here. It's kind of cool as well. Like I said, I don't know if you can see it, but that's that's three stitches for each stitch. Makes them nice strong. It's easier to see over here kind of see it with the, the double stitches. It makes triple stitches on each of it. It does three stitches for each stitch. It's good, good strong. And even the zigzag is still stretchy even with that. So more stretchy than that. Zigzag is still stretchy even with the triple stitches. So then this is the buttonhole maker. I honestly never use this because um, it just kind of grinds up the fabric I found. So I don't know if it's just my machine or uh, because my machine is old or it's just not very well done. But anyway, basically what you do is you turn it to number one, and then it sews a stitch that way. You turn it to number two, and it'll sew stitches on the end. And then you turn it to number three, and it comes back this way, so you get the whole square buttonhole. But again, I never really use that. So, And so then these um, are different tensions as well for sewing fabrics. Um, it changes how it pulls it through, so you push it all the way down. So if you leave them up like this, that's pretty good for sewing, you know, like average fabrics. Um, if you push it all the way down, that's good for embroidering, which you can, you know, combine with your zigzag stitch to get some embroidery. Um, if you push this once, it pops it halfway up. And this is good for really fine fabrics like silk or chiffon, something like that. And if you push it again, it pops it all the way back up. And that'll affect how it goes through over here. So then the most important thing to remember when you're sewing is to keep your fingers away from here because if you do, that needle can come down and go right through them. And you don't want needles going through your fingers. So keep your fingers away from here. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have an Elko sewing machine, uh, leave me a comment and let me know if yours is the same as mine or if they had a different model. I don't know how many models of these they made. Um, I know that they're now only used for commercial use, so the, the home Nelco sewing machines are no longer in existence. So I'd love to hear what everybody else has. See you Thursday, guys.